and this is Cam, we're from Sigma and we're going to talk to you about how we made the track Rude Boy. Yeah, so the initial idea for the track, um, and we had the, uh, it's one of the first times we had a vocalist in mind before we set out to write the track and we'd heard Doctor on a couple of um, dubstep tunes before and we just really liked the tone of his voice so we thought <coughs> we'd just try and lay down a real simple jungle beat with the jungle bass line not really much synthesis or anything going on but literally just a beat and a bass and um we just wanted to keep it as simple as possible like three notes four notes and um so we just you know set out to kind of <coughs> just try and, and capture the sound you know the old jungle sound with slightly sort of newer production yeah i mean um i'm sure if you're watching this you'd have heard the track um i think in terms of the drums and stuff we wanted to keep it quite organic like you know the original kind of jungle sound like cam was saying um, and what we usually find is with a lot of the tracks that we write, the breaks and the drum hits, they're not just, obviously, like we like to kind of have, have individual drums for each track, but it's a culmination of about seven or eight projects until, you know, you've kind of honed something that sounds kind of right, do you know what I mean? So, I mean, from something that is really quite simple, it might just be because we're really anal, and uh, I think a lot of the time as a producer, you find yourself becoming more and more anal the more you do it. Um, we've just ended up just kind of, yeah, just, basically adding what well, looks like I've probably got about 15 layers of drums there a lot of which you probably can't even hear if to the untrained ear but obviously to us it's um it's quite important just to get it kind of right and i think i think some of the breaks um obviously we did before this there was a remix we did um, of a track called special dedication and it had a very similar sort of <coughs> well similar sort of vibe to it i think some of the hits I think even their, their name, special dedication breaks. So, I mean, they're just some that some that we you know they sound good in the one project. So we brought them in. Yeah, we'll play we'll play the break by itself. I mean, the actual break by by itself um, combined parts <laughs> sounds like that. I mean, obviously, to all the people that break heads, you can hear it's quite clear that there's a Lynn Collins think break in there that we've kind of edited slightly. I think it's pitched up a little bit because a lot of the stuff that we use we've got a, we've got a sample pack that's got all of the original breaks in it um, and it's kind of almost better for you to select the original break rather than like an edited one because then you can put your stamp on it rather than rather than just um, just using something someone else has done so I mean well, let me just see if I can find that one just to think this one here which I think in terms of the project file there hasn't been a massive amount of processing just the rolling off and maybe adding a bit more mid-range into the mix but and a slight little dip at the top so it wasn't clashing with some of the other shakers but I mean I think the break that break in general it's probably seen as I was saying before like three or four project files worth of processing to kind of get it to that stage where it's nice and bright it's clean and it's going to jump up amongst all the other breaks but again I think it's a situation where it just depends on how you want the break to sit like if, if you need to fill out kind of the high mids in a thin jungle break like this one you'd need a lot of that kind of grit to kind of carry it otherwise it just sounds a bit just too soft and weak whereas if you've got like a big kick and snarey thing the focus is more around that rather than the actual kind of uh, kind of shuffle from the break so I mean there's a think break in there there's the old hot pants break which again is like the original version which we pitched up I think it's, it's like you, you, you hear it you can hear there's like there's elements of it that don't sound right and I know some people might uh, go through it all and start EQing out and everything but you, you can't hear it in the track so we just leave it in there. So yeah, that's quite important actually. Again, like we've rolled off a lot of the low ends so we're not going to have flashing frequencies. Um, slight peak on the high mids and the top just to kind of pull out the shaker. Um, moving up, we've got a shuffle break. Which is another kind of cut. I think this is in that Ray Keith tune, wasn't it? Was the Ray this, this is this is actually um, when we were working with Fresh, he gave us a load of breaks, and this is what I think this is actually one that he used. I don't know layered in um, what's the tune on the digital sound? The soundboy break is uh, heavyweight. Heavyweight, yeah. Yeah, so it's just, it's a similar break mm. to that. And I mean, with all of the thing we always found working with Fresh, although obviously he's an amazing producer and we look up to him in a big way, he crunches the crap out of his break yeah and this break i mean if you hear the kick and snare in it it's kind of just really it's got a real like it's been tubed or something and um yeah. so i mean it's just the kind of in in, in the, like the middle sort of shuffle that we really wanted to use we've sort of brought, brought down the volume with the kick and snare yeah because i mean like as i said before with the jungle stuff you kind of want that element of grit to it otherwise it just sounds too clean um so yeah you've got that shuffle there's 
this is just like the snare and like the shuffle from another old kind of jungle break. I think I think that was from like one of them jungle massive sample CDs or yeah. something. I can't remember yeah. what they're called. Jungle breaks or something. Um, a little thin <clears throat> snare that we've got that just kind of pulls up a bit at the top. But again, like as we said, a lot of these you won't even hear them. It's just kind of best just to play with the snares together. Yeah, that's the little top of the. What's that break called? We've used that in another tune. Another really thing. little thin little clap that just sits on top of that. A little ghost, ghost snare to add to the shuffle. A lot of our other tracks, they'll have a much more weighty kick drum, but just to kind of keep it true with the style, we just used a really thin kick, which literally was, it's taken from an old break, um, which I can't remember the name of, but you can hear it, it's really thin. It's not even chopped very well, is it? Can you hear? <laughs> it's got like a little click on the end. <laughs> but when it's all together, you can't hear any of that, so it's okay. <laughs> But I mean, if you look on the analyzer, and this is another thing that we do quite a lot, um, you can see, if we just quickly have it, it's peaking, usually our kick drums will peak at about 100 hertz. But because of the style of the break and all the drums are pitched up, for it to fit amongst it all, you kind of have to have it so it's pitched up slightly. So I mean, instead of it peaking at about 100, it's actually peaking at 200, which in the case of a track with a big like kind of rumbling bass line, it's cool because you get a lot more room for the bass just to breathe and you don't have to do any side chaining or anything. It just, it's, it's got its space within the mix. I think the thing with the bass line, which we'll come onto in a bit as well, is um, it's a sub, but it's been quite distorted. So it's got a tone to it as well. So if you've got a kind of heavy kick drum, um, you know, you need to have room for that, which is yeah. why it's pitched up. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I mean, as far as the drums, that's pretty much it. I don't even think we've got many edits and stuff on there, have we? I mean, I think at the start of the track, it's just the think break, the Lin think break playing by itself. And then at the drop, we might just have a little filter and a reverse crash just to introduce it to kind of build up the, the tension. And then the breaks come in, and that's how it sounds together. I think, I mean, as I said, because like the drums are kind of a culmination of a few different project files. A lot of the time, they've had a lot of processing going on individually over a few period of a period of like different times. So, I mean, usually we'd probably group them, but I'm not sure if we have in this instance. Yeah, we yeah we've got them grouped actually. Yeah, but that's just that's just to run a filter over it for the um, for the intro really more than anything else. Yeah, so we've just basically got a TBK filter, which it's not the best filter, but it's just really easy to use. You know, you can get like a it's easy just like one knob. Or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's basically it for the drums. If you listen to the track, there obviously aren't a ton of musical elements there, which we didn't really feel like it needed because a lot of the time with dance music and especially drum and bass, it kind of it's good to have a lot of music in some tracks, but others they just don't really suit it, especially like if you're going for a certain style. And it gets lost. It sometimes gets lost in the dance floor because ultimately, you know, we're making tunes to play out. <clears throat> and if it's too much music, people don't get it. You know, it needs to be straight to the point more often than not. Yeah. So. We've, I think in terms of musical elements, we've got one at the intro with like some chords, which we bounced out, which were from Reactor. Um, you know, the Razor, is it Razor? I mm. think I think I've got it here as well, actually, so it's not just bounced. Uh, these were only really thrown in so that it gave Doctor like a, a key, really, because obviously if you just give him a bass line, he can do his thing, but this yeah. gave him something to work around, and they just stuck. Yeah, and I mean, this didn't take, much, I mean, I think it was just a patch that came with Razor that we just kind of, fiddle with slightly to, to make it how we want it but we thought it was quite cool because it's got a real soft tone to it and with the, like the soft bass line as well and the, like the eeriness of the chords we thought it worked really well and then we obviously we pitched it up an octave for the second half just so it kind of progressed the, the pattern slightly um, so there was that There's, we've also got an arpeggio that we've bounced as well here which was out of here we go. Which we thought was quite a cool effect. Yeah, it was from Contact. It's um, where's the Contact? I think I had it just here. Where is it? Oh, I'll pay you a Contact. Here we go. So, if you open, I'll open the Contact patch. It's from the Retro Machines library. Um, and what's cool, what we found is quite cool about this, this library is firstly the fact because it's like sampled from like a lot of analog synths it's got like a real kind of warm sound to it um so what we did with this this patch is i mean if you look at the midi it's literally just like five or six notes that are record like layered a few octaves up and we've got the arpeggiator running on it um so i think we set it to be i think is it a triplet or is it just times two 
can't remember. And I mean, you've got all these various different settings on here, so you can have it so that you can change the order it plays, you can change the amount of octaves it goes through when you play. Um, you've even got like this kind of grid editor where you can turn up and down the volumes of each of the different hits that, that, it's, that it's kind of playing and even turn them on and off. So, I mean, we, once again, we kept it quite simple. We just had, just so it was kind of going, I think it's up and down. Blue, blue, yeah. blue. Well, it was up, just up. Is it a chord anywhere? Yeah, it's a chord, yeah. So there's all a seven. And an oh, no, it's not just a seven. It's just a seven. And it has quite like a nice, like, eerie, almost sounds a little bit like Joker or kind of Timberland or something. It sounds quite analog. Yeah, analog, yeah. Um, with a little bit of reverb on there as well, just to chain. Add to it. I think there's yeah, there's a well yeah, no we don't have a chain. <laughs> We've just got one of these to <laughs> ramp up the gain to make it louder. <laughs> Which we're trying to rein in again now because all our old projects are completely just, you know, too 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 loud. Yeah, we got a bit silly with the volume a few years back, but now we like to keep it everything at 0 dB just so it's all level. Um so I mean in terms of musical elements I think we had one more uh, massive patch that we ran over the top of the chords which just added a bit of extra kind of depth to it Sorry. which is literally a two note thing which just added, adds a bit of ambience um, which was cool aside from that I think there was actually a sample that we got from a it's the what the sample but motion samples which do really amazing sample packs and what one way that we've got of like just digging out for samples which you find quite quite interesting is we we have a um, mixed in key a program and we just point it at our sample folder i get it to analyze everything and then we've got when we've got like a track we can obviously work out what the key is and then just obviously have everything in key with that so, so you can just really quickly find samples that work with the track i mean sometimes when um obviously we've got a Kind of dual setup here. Um, this this has got all the uh, this computer on this side. I don't know if you can see it. It's not on at the moment, obviously. But <laughs> this has got um, um, you know pretty much all the samples that we use in, in the studio. So this has got mixing keys, it's got everything on it. <clears throat> so one of us can be on there, sort of sourcing samples, and then we can put it in our Dropbox, which then we can put onto this computer, and you know it's quite an instant thing. So yeah. um, we can both be almost, almost working on tracks together. Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, yeah, so this, uh, the actual sound, I mean, it was, we, this, this was one of the first things we came across, actually, which is quite cool. It's like, it's kind of like an organ. And we've obviously chopped it. I mean, if you look at the audio, you can see it didn't actually play like that. I think we've just kind of moved it around and flicked it a bit. So so you've got the, the note at the top on the piano, which was quite cool. I think there's a bit of reverb on that as well. Um, yeah, I mean, as far as the musical elements are concerned for this track, I don't think there was much else. I mean, we've got some... I think this is a vengeance thing. These are more just effects, though, to just kind of effects. fill out. Man. Yeah. Um, some more... Yeah, we've obviously, like, have your stock kind of effects that we like to put in there and stuff, like your down filters and stuff. I think this is a vengeance thing here. Just the drop, just to add a bit more... Kind of, I don't know, hiss or something. Sometimes the tracks just don't sound finished until you have them weirdly. And with the ARP sound we're talking about, we just ended up bouncing it out. I think it's because the computer was getting a bit, it, well, not clogged up, it's fine now because we've uh, ramped it. But um, yeah. So, yeah, we've just um, sort of bounced it out and then put like, just a volume fade on it, really. And it gives you a bit more control on the um, release. Yeah, definitely. Um, that's all for now. But if you want to hear more of how we made our amazing track, Rude Boy, go and check out Computer Music. The new issue. Download over 30 exclusive plugins. Get hundreds of pro quality samples and power up your production skills with in depth tutorials. We break it down for you step by step, and you'll see exactly how it's done in expert video guides and producer masterclass sessions with pro producers. Get all this and more with Computer Music Magazine every month on iPad and iPhone, PC and Mac, Android and in print.